I want to just clarify one scenario before we get to any problems involving it so that we can avoid any confusion. We'll often get problems that deal with something like car tires in contact with the road and we'll be talking about the friction between the car tire and the road. So your car tire will be rotating and there is a point of contact between the car tire and the road. And the danger is in thinking that since this car is moving we must be dealing with kinetic friction. But think carefully about that because that's not the case. The car is moving, it's true, but this point of contact between the two surfaces is not moving. Every point on the car tire is grabbing hold of the road. So actually normally what we're dealing with is static friction. It only turns into kinetic friction if this car tire would stop moving and you're now braking and it's skidding or you could I guess be doing a burnout or something like that. As soon as this point of contact is slipping that's when we're dealing with kinetic friction. The two surfaces are moving in relation to each other. So a normally operating car is still static friction. You could take the same thing for example if you're walking. You as a person have motion but your foot is in steady contact with the floor so that's static friction. If you would slip, then you're talking about kinetic friction. So the concepts you've learned about friction should be shedding some light on Newton's first law. In a certain sense, friction is what reconciles Newton's first law with reality. Recall that Newton's first law was about inertia, and it said that objects in motion like to stay in motion. But in real life, every time we put an object in motion, it slowly comes to a stop. And friction is the key to that. Friction is the force which is adjusting the net force on an object to make Newton's first law remain true. That objects with a net force of zero do indeed remain in motion, but that friction is a force that can withstand that motion.